Welcome back to the Lumios Post, where we talk about all things Pokemon, and today we have another episode of the Paradox Podcast. We do deep dives and just speculative videos, long-form content. It's a lot of fun. All right, so today I want to talk about, because Pokemon Day is rapidly approaching now, uh, it's seriously, like seriously guys, like January flew by, right? Uh, so Pokemon Day is rapidly approaching, and traditionally on Pokemon Day, you know, we get a Pokemon Presents, and this Presents will reveal, you know, a bunch of side games, updates for Go Unite, uh, that Cafe game, Cafe Remix, I think is what it's called, stuff like that. And for the past, my goodness, how long has it been? I think since Sun and Moon, there has always been a mainline game. And for the past few years, it's been revealed on Pokemon Day, right? Like last year, we got the DLC. Uh, I'm including DLC as like a, a mainline game here because it's taking the place of third or sequel versions like Black 2 and White 2 or Pokemon Platinum. So yeah, uh, the last few years, we have gotten... A reveal. We got the DLC last year, uh, Scarlet and Violet the year before, Brand Diamond and Shiny Pearl, and Legends Arceus the year before. Then uh, the year before that, we had the Sword and Shield DLC. Uh, well, that was actually revealed back in January, so that was one of those years where we didn't have one. But then the year before that, uh, we had the Sword and Shield reveal. Uh, so yeah, it, it's been something they've been doing for a while now. Um, I think everyone's expecting it this year. And I wanted to get into the possible options and talk about, you know, why they're possible, and, uh, you know, overall what I think on them, um, yeah, so l let's, let's get into it, and I will say, you know, th the thing that makes this year so interesting is that there's more uncertainty this year, right, like, I think everybody kind of knew after Legends Arceus, uh, like, the 20, what was that, 2022, uh, I think everybody knew Gen 9 was going to get revealed. And then everybody knew that Gen 9 DLC was going to get revealed last year. And, you know, when Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legends Arceus was revealed, pretty much everyone knew, like, something Sinnoh was coming. But this time it's a little different because this time there's, you know, a lot of possible options and there's great cases for all of them. So, yeah, that's, again, what I want to get into. Uh... Let's get right in. So first off, let's talk about patterns because patterns are patterns until they are broken, but until they are broken, they're patterns, right? So the thing is that uh, what we saw with Pokemon was we saw the Gym 1 was Kanto, Gen 2, Johto, Gen 3, Hoenn, then Kanto, Gym 4, Sinnoh, then Johto, then Gym 5 Unova. So what that means is that th this pattern was actually recreated too, right? You then have uh, Flash Forward a little bit, and when we're doing the remakes, we have Fire Red and Leaf Green, then we have Johto and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, then we have uh, Oris, Hoenn, and then because, remember, Fire Red and Leaf Green came after, uh, so Kanto came after Hoenn, Ruby, and Sapphire, after Oris, when they did Sun and Moon, then they went to Kanto again. They went with Kanto with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Then they did Sinnoh with Brand Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legends Arceus. And uh, now we're here. So what this means, if we're looking at that pattern, is that Johto would be next. Now, there's a lot of... I'm not saying that Johto will be next. I'm just saying there, there's a good argument for Johto being next, right? Also, the thing is, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. The thing is, Johto or Unova, right? Like, that seems to be the main contenders. Now, at the end of the day, Pokemon can do whatever the flip they want, right? Like, if Pokemon wants to, they can drop Pokemon Z on Pokemon Day. They could be like, this is coming out this year. Here's Pokemon Z. But that's probably not going to happen. So, uh, you know, it can be anything, but the likely options are Johto or Unova. And there's just as much hints for both, right? Like, with... Scarlet and Violet, we see them giving special paradoxes to the legendaries of Johto. The legendary beasts, Suicune, Raikou, and Entei all got paradox Pokemon. Okay, but so did Unova. Unova got paradox Pokemon in uh, Iron Crown, Iron Boulder, and Iron Leaves being paradox forms of Cobalion, Terrakion, and Virizion. So, you see what I mean? Like, 
there's equal amounts on both sides. You then also have the fact that, yeah, a lot of Johto Pokemon have gotten love lately, like Girafferig got an evolution, uh, Dunsparce got an evolution, um, uh, you have uh, Wooper got a regional variant and evolution. In Legends Arceus, you had uh, Typhlosion get a Hisuian form, um, and you had Ursaring get an evolution, and Stantler get an evolution. But we've also seen a lot of Unova Pokemon get that, right? Like, in Legends Arceus, we had Hisuian Samurai as well as Typhlosion. We had Hisuian forms for uh, um, some Unova Pokemon, too. We had Zoroark. Uh, we had Bradyary. We had uh, evolutions or, or a form and evolution for Basilin with a White Stripe Basilin and Basil Legion. Then in Scarlet and Violet, we had an evolution to B-Sharp and King Gambit. So... They are, like, giving just as much love to Unova as they are Johto. And then the big kicker is, like, Teal Mask had heavy Johto vibes, right? And there were a lot of Johto Pokemon that were brought back into the game and are seen in the wild there, uh, like Yamma, Wooper, Centret. Uh, but then Blueberry Academy is literally set in the Unova region. Like, they, they outright say that. And you even see characters who are related to Unova characters. Drayton is the grandson of Drayden, uh, Lacey is the daughter of Clay, and you even have uh, a couple other references to Unova. Like, you can make your club room look, uh, like, inspired by the movie that you make at Pokestar Studios in Black 2 and White 2. Uh, you also, on that note, there is a NPC, I think it's the uh, Pokemaniac NPC, um, in Scarlet and Violet, he wears, like, you know, a bunch of Pokemon on his design, but he also has the ho the Pokestar Studios um, logo on his shirt. So, like I said, there's, there's a decent amount of options. But, again, looking at Johto specifically, if you look at the pattern, Johto should be next, technically. Um, again, patterns are patterns until they're broken. Game Freak has broken many patterns, guys. Many, many patterns. Uh, but then, also, you have the fact that uh, Johto, uh, there's the question of what kind of Johto game would it be, right? You know, there's the option of it being like another Johto remake. There's the option like just traditional remake, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, those kinds of remakes. There's the option of it, technically, it, it could be a Let's Go game. It could be like Let's Go Togepi and Let's Go Meryl or something. I, or Let's Go Pichu, I don't know. Uh, then there's the possibility that it could be a Legends game. Could be Legends Celebi or Legends ho -Oh, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of a thing too. Also, I just remembered, they also have a set of cards. It might only be in the West, so that would be a big point against this point. Uh, but they have a set of cards focused on Lugia, ho -Oh, and Suicune coming out in february like and i think it's pretty late february like it's right around pokemon day uh, obviously the interesting thing there is lugia ho -Oh, and suicune are the mascots of the johto game silver gold and crystal so that's that's kind of wild right like that's that's weird guys that's weird uh, i do think that well I'll, I'll get into that in a second i'll get what i think on in a second we're gonna cover all this though but yeah so I will say, the issue with it being a traditional remake, an Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire style thing, is that Johto has already gotten that. Johto had that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So, this would be the first time that they are giving a game that got a remake a traditional remake, right? Because when they remade Kanto for the second time, they didn't do another like Fire Red or Leaf Green. They actually remade Pokemon Yellow and they did a. Um, let's go pikachu let's go eevee and that was that was like one of those experimental games right like that's that's kind of how we classify things here right you have the main games which are like the games that the generation revolves around scarlet and violet sword and shield x and y uh, diamond and pearl etc etc you have the uh, sequel slash third version games the follow-up games we'll call them that the follow-up games this would be black 2 white 2 ultra sun ultra moon platinum um, and also DLC, Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, and Teal Mask and Indigo Disc. Those would all be examples of the follow-ups. And then you have remakes, 
which are Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. A clear indicator of what these games are is them taking the name of the original game and just throwing something before it. Like gold was remade to Heart Gold. Red was remade to Fire Red. You know, Diamond was remade to Brilliant Diamond. Then you have the experimental games. And so far, we've only had two of the experimental games. We had Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and then we had Legends Arceus. Now, technically, they could continue those. They could make more Let's Go games. They could make more Legends games. Or there is always the possibility that they make a different experimental game, right? They add to that collection. So we have, like, I don't know. I can't think of a good adjective, but, like... It, Pokemon Let's Go, Pokemon Legends, and Pokemon Adventures. That's actually the name of the manga, but y you get what I'm saying. They could start a brand new experimental game with Johto. Because again, this would be unprecedented. Them actually just remaking Gold and Silver again and doing like another Heart Gold Soul Silver. So if that's the case, if they do Johto, I would say it is more likely to be an experimental game. And I would also say it is more likely to be a uh, new experimental game. And, and the reason I say that is because, for one, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, um, I don't think we're going to ever see Let's Go games again. Um, and that's not personal bias. A lot of people know that I'm not a big fan of the Let's Go games. Uh, I think that they are very pretty. They have their strengths. Uh, the prettiest game we've had on the Switch. But... I just, I don't really, I don't like the gameplay. Um, but I, I really, unbiased opinion, I do not think there will be Let's Go games. And the reason why is because Let's Go was made to capitalize on the Pokemon Go craze, right? Uh, Pokemon Go happened, and guys, that game, I don't know if y'all remember, but that game took the world by storm. There were, I remember, I was in high school, I was a sophomore in high school, uh, when Pokemon Go came out. It came out the summer before my sophomore year. And, like, the... You know how there's, like, social classes in high school. High school is very elitist, I guess. Um, <laughs> but it has social classes. Every single social class is playing Pokemon Go, right? Like, like the nerds or geeks are playing Pokemon Go. But also, like, the jocks and the, you know, the popular girls they're all playing pokemon go too so like everyone was in on that pokemon let's go was meant to capitalize on the success of pokemon go one both in the name because everybody knows pokemon go so seeing a game made pokemon let's go and it being marketed as like the mainline go game you're like whoa i know what that is that's that game i've been playing for you know the past three years so yeah it it, it was capitalizing on that but it was also a way to try and get the people who got hooked on Pokemon Go to come over to the mainline games. And then likewise, I think it also, you know, it was kind of a deal between Niantic and Game Freak. It was also a way to get the people who were playing the mainline games, but maybe didn't play Pokemon Go to go over and start playing Pokemon Go. Because if you wanted the new Pokemon Meltan and Melmetal, you had to play Pokemon Go. So that's what Let's Go was doing. Pokemon Go, while it is still a popular game and people play it, the craze is not there anymore. The people who were playing it in my high school, uh, you know, unless they were Pokemon fans, are not playing it anymore. Um, for the large part. I'm sure there's exceptions. Of course there's exceptions. But, for the most part, the Pokemon Go craze is done. So there's no need to make a Let's Go game to capitalize on that. Then with Legends, Legends was pretty successful when you think about it like it did sell less than brilliant diamond shining pearl but there's a lot of factors in that uh the biggest one being that it was not a holiday game it was released um in january whereas brilliant diamond shining pearl got released the friday before black friday which is when you know everything goes on sale everybody's shopping so people are buying their holiday presents whether it's christmas or you know whatever and um they are buying games for their nephews their grandchildren their children all that but legends arceus comes after january well in january you do have and if you look, work in retail you know that this is very true new year's resolutions greatly impact sales in january they're genuinely because people stick with it for like a month they do they're like i'm not shopping as much that's it so for january that is true uh and legends arceus again did come out in january but then also, it's like a thing of, you know, 
I bought my Kid Brand Diamond Shining Pearl, they're tied over. Then there's the fact that Legends Arceus, they, you know, I don't think this impacted it so, so much, but I do think it's worth noting. Legends Arceus was one game. Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl was two games, and they're roping those sales together when they're giving us the numbers. So if you're someone who, like I know Joe Merrick does this, uh, I, I'm pretty sure. I would be very surprised if he didn't, but there's a lot of people who do. They buy Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Okay, well, with Legends Arceus, you didn't have to do that. You just bought Legends Arceus, you know? So you're counting that as two units for one person, but then with Legends Arceus, they bought just the one copy. So it's one unit for that one person. But other than that, Legends Arceus did do really well. It is praised amongst fans. I also will mention, since it was a different style of game, there are also going to be less people who play it for that reason too. Like, they're like, no, I, I like my traditional Pokemon game where I battle gyms and trainers, not this kind of mixed action game. Uh, I don't like that. So they're not going to buy it for that reason. Um, but yeah, so... Legends Arceus was well received. Uh, I know that there are plenty of people who comment on my video who don't like it. Overall, guys, come on, you're you're absolutely you're insane. You you were genuinely you were stupid if you think that people do not like Legends Arceus. Like I see people state it as a fact. Well, Legends Arceus were terrible games, so they're not going to remake those. No, they weren't. <laughs> like like genuinely, you're you were in the minority on that opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. But no, just because you think that way doesn't mean the world does. Um, most people did enjoy Legends Arceus. Uh, it, it got great reviews amongst fans, both like casual fans and like Pokemon fans alike. Again, always going to be people who don't like something. But yeah, that's the case, uh, whether you like it or not. Um, but the thing with Legends Arceus that we have to remember is Pokemon traditionally has like a three year development cycle. Um, so like right now they are starting work on whatever game will come out three years from now, whether that's like, which I think that would be whatever the remake is in gen 10, if we're following the three year pattern. So that said, I think like any success from legends Arceus, we're primarily going to see in gen 10, not in gen nine, which would mean that we would not get a Legends game because they wouldn't have started work on that because they would not have known when they were starting work on that if Legends Arceus would be successful. And given that there was a lot of backlash to Let's Go, they they probably would want to wait before greenlighting another one, you know? So I don't think it'd be Legends Arceus, I don't think, or Legends Celebi, Ho-Oh, whatever. I don't think it'd be a Legends game and I don't think it'd be a Let's Go game if it's Johto. I think it would be an experimental a new experimental johto game i don't know what that could look like i think perhaps maybe there's maybe there's something here maybe there's something for a johto game brought because johto was back when pokemon was linear so maybe it's it's the johto game you're going through the gyms and you know it's not set in the past like legends arceus it doesn't have action elements but it is open world like scarlet and violet uh that could be something, you know, because they're taking a linear game and reimagining it into an open world game. That could be something that I could see them doing. Uh, so there is that. But, you know, that's, of course, just speculation. I'll have inside knowledge. But yeah. So now we move into the discussion with Unova. Uh, with Unova, I will say this is this is where I'm kind of thinking. Like, I'm thinking it's Unova. Uh, and the, the big hints for Unova are, for one, again, Unova's gotten just as much love lately as, um, Johto has. And for two, the Blueberry Academy, I think, is the biggest thing, right? You have, in the Blueberry Academy, it's actually set in Unova, you have Unova characters, and then even aside from that, like, in the Blueberry Academy, the music is all, like, a homage to Unova music. You have the music in uh the savannah references the route i believe route six music in unova and then you have the uh in the coastal biome the music references driftville city uh there are other examples the battle themes are all remixes of unova battle themes like the unova wild battle theme the unova strong pokemon wild battle theme uh and the um unova trainers theme so 
you know, it's it's kind of a big deal. I also think you can play the music from Castelia City in uh, your club room, I think. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, but there's also, you can decorate your room to be kind of Castelia City themed, and it has like black and white forest in it. You can theme it again after uh, the movie that you make in Pokestar Studios that's like about an alien invasion. So a lot of different ways you can see Unova being referenced here. And it all kind of feels like a setup, right? Because we don't get to go to mainland Unova, not even a part of mainland Unova in the Indigo Disc. So it's almost like they're setting us up because we're about to. Um, then there's some other things like in the trailer for the Indigo Disc, when they revealed uni like the legendaries coming back, uh, that you will be able to track down legendaries uh, from past games. They normally split screened a bunch of legendaries, but with Zekrom, Reshiram, and Kyurem, they gave them like their own little like cutscene in that trailer. Uh, so you could say that too. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, and this is what I think is really important. I think Pokemon likes to. I think Pokemon likes to be aware of what we're thinking and play around with that. You know what I mean? Like I remember back when it was what year was it it was the year isle of armor and crown tundra came out i think that was 2020 uh in 2020 there was a pokemon presents and in that pokemon presents they revealed isle of armor information excuse me and they uh they had these plushies in the background it was like raikou suikun nente and i think maybe even uh, Lugia and ho -Oh, and then I think there was like a Pikachu and Eevee and so everyone was like oh my gosh it's let's go Johto and then they even at the end of the presentations they said oh we have a special presents on a new game you know next week and everyone was thinking they're about to reveal Pokemon let's go when I say everyone I don't mean everyone but a lot of people were thinking they're about to reveal let's go Johto get on the presents next week and sure enough they're just revealing pokemon unite and showing some gameplay footage of it so it was not what we were thinking you know so i say that to say i think that was intentional i think they wanted you to think they were about to reveal pokemon let's go pikachu and eevee i or let's go johto excuse me and i think that now they want us to go it could be johto no it could be unova no it could be johto like i think they want us flip-flopping like that uh and then you know the the precedence of these legends arceus games uh let's go game makes you just completely unaware of what time what type of game it could be and see the thing is black and white is very interesting too just like johto has its own special reasons that like we kind of can't accurately predict what kind of remake or reimagining of the johto region we could get it's the same for black and white because the issue is you have black and white and black 2 and white 2. No other game in Pokemon history has had a sequel game. There's been third versions or there's been like uh, like Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. While those are two games, they're essentially a third version, right? They're like just an alternate version of the Sun and Moon story. But black 2 and white 2 is the only game that was like a direct sequel to black and white obviously i'm not including gold and silver being sequels to red and blue or green uh i obviously i'm not including that i mean something on the scale of like a red two, green two, right no they never did that only with black and white so the question is because black two and white two introduce a lot of changes you have uh, new gyms. You know, you have three new gyms specifically. You have, it's a different time, so characters have different roles. Charon is your rival in Black and White, but is the first gym leader in Black 2 and White 2. Bianca is your other rival in Black and White, but is the professor's assistant in Black 2 and White 2. Um, you have new characters, like obviously the other two new gym leaders were Roxy and Barlad. You have new... Uh, characters and like Colrus as well uh you also have new areas you have the like i think it was lintimus town uh reversal mountain humalau city a new victory road route uh aspersia city verbank city that whole area and then you have new features you have the pokestar studios you have the pokemon world tournament which please please bring that back please please 
But anyways, so you see there's there's a lot of things from Black 2 and White 2 that make it almost like a completely different game from Black and White. So, would we see a remake to Black and White? Will we see a remake to Black 2 and White 2? Will we see a remake of both? Will we see like a hybrid version of both? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, and I, I do have a solution for how I could see this play out, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, another thing I do want to say is the obvious thing here would be to say, well, it's going to be Black and White that gets remade. They're not going to make... They're not going to remake Black 2 and White 2 without remaking Black and White because Black and White, uh, you know, Black 2 and White 2 is a sequel. You're going to have to play the first one. And the thing with that is that while that is a very good argument, the issue is why are they doing their best to keep the stuff from Black 2 and White 2 alive? Why is there a whole Pokestar Studios themed a Black 2 and White 2 exclusive feature? in um the blueberry academy why is there a guy walking around paldea there's people in paldea with pokestar studio shirts why on pokemon masters are they constantly pushing chorus roxy uh marlin um they also in the games chorus was kind of a, a important part of pokemon sun and moon and ultra sun and ultra moon or more so ultra sun and ultra moon but he was also in sun and moon they they push these they don't want us to forget these black two and white two characters so there's black and white you know if they remade that and that one only i would think that they would incorporate that they would have chorus and maybe even roxy and stuff appear even if they're not as gym leaders think of like in a similar role they had the characters and let's go pikachu and eevee right like where there was the Team Rocket uh, guy from Gen 2. I always forget his name. I'm so sorry. Is it Petrol? I don't remember if that one was Petrol. But anyways, he is a like second in command to Giovanni in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Then also, they incorporate the whole thing of Blue taking over Giovanni's gym. When you come back to Giovanni's gym after being the Elite Four in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Blue has taken it over. So they could do things like that. Like after you beat the black and white story, you're able to access the like Aspersia City area and Sharon tells you, hey, they're, they actually just called me to be a gym leader there. So it, it kind of shows you a little bit of what happened between black and white and black two and white two, right? Uh, you also can have little nods like, oh, we're building a, you know, world tournament here at the cold storage. Um, you know, that would kind of suck. That would feel a lot like the battle frontier thing in Oris where they were like the battle frontier project has started, but you don't actually get to see it. That would suck, but I would not put it past game freak. Right now. Then of course there is the option that you could get a experimental game. You could get a let's go Unova, a legends curum and a, or a not, not all three, but, or a, new experimental game with Unova. Let's Go, I don't think will happen for the same reasons I don't think a Let's Go Johto game will happen. Um, Legends, again, same reason. You know, I think that if we see another Legends game, it would not be until Gen 10. Um, so I think it would have to be a new experimental game. But to be frank with you, Black and White has never had their traditional remake. They've never had their Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Fire Red, Leaf Green. So I think it's more likely we get that. I think it's more likely we get our Black and White remakes. Now what I could see is what happened in 2021. 20, uh, 20, we got the announcement of Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl being made by Ilka. And then we had the announcement of Legends Arceus being made by Game Freak. So I could see a similar scenario where we see the November 2024 game be a black and white remake outsourced to another company. Hopefully it's not Ilka. It could be. It could be Ilka. Um, but hopefully it's not. I could see Game Freak outsourcing it to someone else. Um, Bondi Namco would be a dream come true if I'm honest. Uh, but then... In that January, uh, so two months later, we see a Black 2 and White 2 remake done by Game Freak. You know, so you're still getting both games. You don't have to worry about it affecting Game Freak's development cycle because 
they were only developing one game. They had someone else develop the black and white game. I can see that being the case. Um, that is probably what I'll, I'll get into next. My most likely scenario. I think... I think the most likely scenario is definitely Unova. I think it's Unova next, not Johto. Um, and then I think the most likely scenario is that we see either a black and white game that in its post game, similar to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, visits some of the topics and features and characters of Black 2 and White 2. So it, you know, has hey, you can go to this area now, over here, it's Verbank, Aspersia City, even though you weren't able to do that black and white. You learn, Charon's like, oh yeah, they want me to be a gym leader over there in Aspersia City. You learn, oh yeah, there's also these gyms that are being built over in Humalau and over in uh, Verbank. And you even maybe meet with Bryson, he's like, yeah, I actually think I might be retiring. I'm, I want to pursue an acting career. You know, it, they can do things like that. Uh, and then, you know, they could give us a world tournament. They could lock an area like below the cold storage. That's going to be the world tournament. Um, or they could just say, hey, we're building a world tournament, which would kind of suck. But I could see them doing that, unfortunately. Um, or I see the scenario where, and I think this one's probably a little less likely, but... I see a scenario where we get an outsourced black and white remake November 2024, then January or early 2025, we get a Game Freak made Black 2 and White 2 remake. And then you can easily market this as like, like if, if it is glistening black and sparkling white, well then it's just glistening black 2 and sparkling white 2. That's pretty easy. Uh, but yeah, that would be my personal... Uh, guess if if you asked me to put money on it that would be where my money would go um not that i endorse gambling but yeah uh i'm excited for it too i'm gonna be honest i'm ready to go to unova i love unova uh, i think it got i always thought it got a lot of hate i loved it as a kid i was 10 years old when black and white came out loved it black two and white two a year maybe it was two years later i think it was a year later uh, no it was two years later because it takes place two years after black and white that was even better than black and white i mean i i was in love with those games that was a really cool time for me as a kid with pokemon um that was like honestly like potentially like i might would call that the peak era of pokemon for me personally but yeah, so I, I'm excited for it. I'd love to know, you know, how excited you guys are for this. Um, I'm really excited for Pokemon Day to find out what we get. You know, whatever we get, we will be covering here. So please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Also, by the way, sharing these videos, you know, if you think they're good, post them on your Twitter. Be like, this was a great thought or, or your Facebook or wherever. That greatly helps the channel too. But yeah, uh, I guess I guess that's it. I, I'm, I'm feeling like that's a closed discussion. Yeah, uh, I will, I guess, before we go, say there is always the chance of a gap year, but I think that would be more likely to be 2025 would be a gap year, not 2024. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Pokemon is more unpredictable now than it has ever been. I can't wait to see what they're cooking. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Let me know your thoughts and your predictions in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see all of you Later.